Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Speed Development Commentary. I am John Benderwaffles Aljets and today we are taking a look at the Route 930 Speed Development, which was created using the Pokemon Essentials Toolkit within RPG Maker XP using my own custom tile set. Uh, custom being in air quotes because it is actually made up of parts from several different people that I modified and tweaked and changed because um, I'm not much of a tile artist myself. That's largely why I'm not super comfortable with giving the tile set away to people yet. Also because I'm working on developing my own game using it and uh, don't particularly want a whole bunch of people getting games out using it before I can get my own. So rest assured that somebody in the comments will ask for the tile set. And I'm telling you right now in this video that uh, I will give it out someday, just not this day. Okay, so let's jump right in here and uh, let's take a look at this. So this was actually, I'm gonna turn this volume all the way down. This is actually a remake of, uh, I know that it's listed as Route 930, but it's actually a remake of Route 901 from my own Pokemon fan game, um, which I don't like to talk too much about because I don't wanna draw too much attention to it. Um, as you know, there's a lot of legal questions when it comes to fan games and I don't know if this is anything that I'm ever going to release. Uh, it might just be something that I keep to play for myself. Um, or it might be something that gets a wide release. I don't know yet. But uh, I'm actually extremely proud of this route because to me this is this encapsulates everything that a first route should be. Uh, it introduces you to a lot of the core mechanics with grass, ledges, all that sort of stuff, that blinking Steam notification is bugging me. Uh, it, as I said, it, it teaches you about grass, it teaches you about ledges, um, and it's completely possible to make your way through this going one direction uh, without touching grass, which is something that pretty much every first route has done, at least the earlier generation ones. Um, I think fifth generation that changed um, and I don't know if they've done that afterwards. I played sixth, didn't really play seventh generation. Um, I own it. I just haven't gotten around to playing it. So as somebody who spends a lot of his time, uh, making maps, I draw a lot of inspiration from the way that Pokemon does maps. Um, they're very... I don't really know how to describe them, like what words to use to describe them. They they have a flow to them that I really like having in my own maps. Um, I, I've always said that if you, if you pay super close attention to my maps, you'll probably see very Pokemon-esque sort of stylings, especially when it comes to like towns or buildings, things of that nature. I'm, I'm very much full bore into the Pokemon style. And that's because I got, I got my start with map creation. I mean, I was, I was doing like RPG maker and stuff beforehand, but I really got my start, uh, making maps for RPGs with, uh, Pokemon ROM hack, uh, creation. This game project, Pokemon next here actually, uh, started as a hack of fire red. And then eventually like the systems were just, they were just almost too complicated for me. It was the sort of thing where I could have continued development like that, but I didn't see a ton of a point because like the amount of time that it would take me versus the audience that I was likely to garner from it just didn't make a ton of sense. And I found that for my own workflow using RPG maker XP just went better. Um, I still absolutely adore ROM hacks and I wish that, uh, uh, I wish to someday work on one again, but it's not, you know, as I said, XP sort of afforded me more freedom. So I want to take a minute to actually like talk about this tile set. So it's something that so many people, um, bring up and now we're at the end here. Uh, it's something that so many people bring up and I just, I want to sort of talk about it a little bit. Um, if you are someone who plays Pokemon, you'll recognize the styling is, is very fourth generation-y, but it's sort of 
sitting on a 2D plane in such a way that it it could also work with third generation. And I did this on purpose. Um, I wanted the style of this game to feel what I call generation 3.5, which is sort of like this middle ground. If you look at the other speed developments that I've done, like the most recent one, you actually see me running around in a game. Um, I'm using third gen tie or third gen sprites uh, because I prefer the style of the third generation sprites, but I prefer the style of the fourth generation tiles, if that makes any sense. So I've sort of, with this tile set, sort of started combining them together to uh, make them fit. And with this tile set and with the sprites that I have created for next, they fit super well. Um, note that the last speed development I did, the walk in the woods, um, I actually don't think was using this tile set. I think it was using the default, uh, Pokemon essentials tile set, which there's a reason for that. And we will get into that at a future date. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, illustrate to you that I prefer third gen sprites. Um, what else is there to really say about this? I want to do, uh, take a second to talk about just the overall flow of the map. Because as I said, this does everything that a quote-unquote first route should do. If you look at it, you'll notice that you can go along the road and for the most part, never step foot in grass until you get to here. And that's when I'm like, okay, this is where the players are going to have to learn the mechanic of grass. And then alternatively, when you're going home, say you're coming from over here, you can jump down these ledges and you can continue down the road, but you can only continue down the road to a certain point. That's when you have to go through the grass. So either way, no matter which way the player is going on this route, they're going to learn about the mechanic of jumping off of ledges and they're going to learn about grass. When you're designing maps, one thing that you should take into account is the, the learning curve of the game, especially when it comes to the earlier maps, because you want to be sort of naturally introducing your players to game mechanics, and then you want to test them on those game mechanics at some point. So by having the ledges you jump over here, I'm teaching you the ability and I'm teaching you here that it stops. And then I'm introducing you to grass there. And then when you come back, you're being sort of tested on those things because as you're coming back, you can potentially go through the grass here, but then you ultimately have to jump over ledges and do the grass by returning. Um, it's, it's something that you, that you need to keep in mind. If you're going to teach a mechanic, which you should hundred percent teach any mechanics that are in your game, whether it's through actual tutorials where it's like somebody is like, Hey, press this button to do this. Or if it's subtle sort of things like this, where they're, where they learn it naturally at some point you need to test your players, be it a boss battle, be it, um, you know, just another event on the map. You need to just make sure that they understand this and that they have the skills to move forward. Uh, so that's really all that I have to say about this map. It's kind of a short commentary. Um, well, okay, I guess not too short. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, get subscribed, click the little bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. Uh, I will have new kinds of content coming next week. Uh, not just speed developments or commentaries. I'm kind of getting sick of doing those. So I'm starting to limit myself to only one a week starting this next week. Uh, I don't know yet if Wednesday or Saturday will be the speed development, but if one is one, then the other one will be, you know, the other thing. So I'm not going to tell you what the, the new content is, but know that I've got a slate of new stuff that's coming. And so be sure to look for all that. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.